Kamaya and Tyrone Hassel met while serving in the U.S. Army in 2015. They hit it off immediately and wasted no time in getting hitched. By 2018, 22-year-old Kamaya and 23-year-old Tyrone had a two-year-old son, a home they loved, and jobs that they were both passionate about. In 2017, however, both Tyrone and Kamaya were sent to be stationed in South Korea. Tyrone loved his job. He was very proud of the fact that he joined the army and was able to work his way up so quickly. Kamaya did too, but was growing restless. When they arrived in South Korea, it was apparent that they had different priorities. Kamaya was unhappy with the attention she was receiving in her marriage, and it took it upon herself to find validation in whatever man was willing. And that's when she met fellow soldier, Jeremy Cuellar. The two fell hard fast. They were sneaking around, spending late nights together after work shifts, and planning to be together to start a new life once they got home. Now, apparently, Tyrone had an army life insurance policy that was said to be over $400,000. If they separated, Kamaya wouldn't be entitled to any of it. But if Tyrone tragically died before they separated, she would be guaranteed the money and her new life with Jeremy. So Kamaya brought the idea to Jeremy, and they both agreed. They were going to end Tyrone's life and take his money. Well, that's where things get interesting. To ensure that their messages couldn't be tracked or looked through while plotting this crime, she insisted that she and Jeremy strictly communicate via Snapchat. Now, if you don't know, Snapchat videos and photos disappear after a certain amount of seconds and can no longer be found again. For months, the couple messaged back and forth, figuring out a foolproof way to attack Tyrone and make it look like an accident. When they were back in the US, they were all stationed at Fort Stewart in Georgia, and the plan would soon be put into action. It was New Year's Eve, and Kamaya, Tyrone, and their son were currently staying at Tyrone's dad's house in St. Joseph Township, Michigan. Later that evening, Tyrone went to a family party, leaving Kamaya at his dad's house. Kamaya saw this as the perfect opportunity to put her plan into action. Kamaya texted Jeremy as fast as she could and told him to be ready that there was an opportunity to strike. He exited his father's house, but before he can get back to his car, Jeremy pulled the trigger. He hit Tyrone twice in the head, once in the neck, and quickly disappeared. It was time for Kamaya to put her acting skills to the test. When the paramedics got to the scene and asked Kamaya what happened, she acted hysterical, crying and claiming that she had no idea what had happened or why. Unfortunately, by the time the paramedics had gotten Tyrone to the hospital, he was already pronounced lifeless. Surprisingly enough, the police had a hard time getting any kind of lead on the case. There were no witnesses, just the way that Kamaya had planned it. And since the attack on Tyrone happened at night, at a place that he was temporarily staying at, the authorities believed that it could have been a mistake and that the culprit must have thought Tyrone was somebody else. This is all making Kamaya look like she had this insurance policy in the bag. But the police were not giving up that easily. Jeremy was bragging to his other friends in the military about shooting someone, but wouldn't directly say who. One of his friends was concerned and brought this information to law enforcement officials immediately. It didn't take much interrogation for Jeremy to confess and throw Kamaya under the bus. He told police that she had planned the entire thing and that he felt pressured to go along with it. She was stubborn and refused to admit anything, but all the evidence pointed to her. Detectives ended up having to use a lie detector on her, and after intense confrontation, the results revealed the truth. She confessed shortly after. However, Kamaya still found ways to scheme and told police that Tyrone was abusive, making it necessary for her to end his life. She tried to use this narrative to make it appear that her life was in danger and that she wasn't actually in it for the money at all. Jeremy was arrested with a two and a half million dollar bail. He'll be 90 before he's eligible for parole. As for Kamaya, she was found guilty of first degree premeditated murder and conspiracy to commit murder. For that, she received a life sentence without the opportunity for parole.